Well, how is it that we could get this weight of this head to sit on that spine? Because when that weight of the head sits on the spine, now you've got different messages going down and up about what you expect from the strength of that spine. forward and there's a little rounding a little collapse here then the message for the thoracic spine is not at all clear that we expect it to be strong the front of the spine is where the trabecular spongy bone that's what we measure bone mineral density off of that people get their diagnosis for osteoporosis from that trabecular bone is more in the middle and the front of the spine. It's not on the back of it. We're very obsessed with the back of our spine, right? But most of us really have no sense at all that the front of it is a really big deal. When we think of somebody breaking their back, what we think of is that they broke the back of their spine. But in actually in an osteoporosis, frequently it's a, a compression fracture across the front of the spine that happens. So when you bring the weight of the head back on the spine, you now have some really good information going up and down in that system saying, I expect you to be strong because the head is about 10 pounds. And if it's not on the spine, it's missing 10 pounds of information that it needs to have. Now in Ruthie's Bones for Life work, we actually go on to even carrying small amounts of weight on the head because one of the things that inspired her was the African water carriers. And she was, you know, fascinated with the beauty of their walk, but she was also fascinated by the studies that came out that showed that these women could carry a load for free up to 20% of their body weight on their head. This is what scientists called it, carrying a load for free. I just love that statement. And it meant that they didn't breathe heavy. They took an absolutely no extra oxygen up to 20% of their body weight, that they could outperform younger men in the army in their 20s. These studies were older, so they were all younger men, women to younger men. So she really looked at that gait and where that head had to be positioned on the spine in order to carry that weight to be able to have the least amount of compromise in the neck and the low back and um, has really pulled out principles of that through the work. So I love, I love what she's done, where even if we don't have a weight on our head, we can have the weight of our head. We can be using the weight of our head to our advantage.